20th of December 2018 marks the 50th anniversary of the closure of the Trinidad Government Railway. Hi, I'm Glenn Beaton, and this is the story of the railway that built much of the Trinidad that we know today. This video is dedicated to all those men and women who built, worked and died serving the railways of Trinidad. The TGR, unlike many other British West Indian railways, was a government concern from the very beginning. There had been two early attempts at establishing a railway in Trinidad by private companies in 1845. However, both failed to agree financial terms with the Legislative Council and were accordingly rejected. The first tramway was a six and a half mile line built in stages by a series of sugar plantations with the purpose of moving sugar cane to factory and manufactured sugar to the coast for onward shipment by sea. This was the Sapero Tramway in the south of the island, running between San Fernando and the mission of Savannah Grande, which later became Prince's Town. This line initiated a passenger service in 1859, having begun as a very short estate tramway around 1839. With the failure of the two early railway companies, both of whom had been competing for the right to establish a trunk line between Port of Spain and San Fernando in 1845, Trinidad remained without a public railway for over 30 years. The Trinidad government finally decided to do something and in 1870 the matter was once again at the forefront of debate. A decision to build a railway was taken in 1871 and finance was to be raised through government ordinance upon debentures issued to the government-owned railway department. The first line was the Port of Spain to Arima line and it opened in 1876. The Port of Spain to Arima railway was very successful and from the outset proved remunerative exceeding all expectations. The initial loan of £150,000 granted in 1873 was repaid in full plus interest and the railway made a decent profit. Early success encouraged the construction of more lines across the island. St. Joseph de Cuba in 1880, with extension to San Fernando in 1882, became known as the San Fernando Extension Railway. The purchase of two tramways in 1879 for future expansion saw the government purchasing the San Fernando and Guayacara tramways. The Guayacara tramway was converted to a railway between Marabella Junction, one mile north of San Fernando, to Princestown in 1884. This line became known as the Guayacara Railway Extension. In 1897, the Arima line was extended eastwards to Sangre Grande and became the Sangre Grande Extension Railway. The Tabaquit Railway Extension from Jerningham Junction in central Trinidad was built in 1898. These lines enjoyed relative levels of success, but the TGR overall was profitable for a very long time as a railway opened up new areas of the country hitherto void of proper communication. With the relative success of the Trinidad Government Railway, the company in the early years had been the pride of the colonial government and seemed to go from strength to strength. In 1903, a new terminus station in Port of Spain was called for, as were new extensions to those areas without a rail connection, namely the south and southeasterly districts of the island. Debate, generally about where to build first, started in 1903 and carried on for several years. Agreement was finally reached in 1910 for the construction of two lines at the same time, Rio Claro from Tabaquit and Siparia from San Fernando. Part of the argument against the expansion was regarding the financial ambiguity of both schemes. However, those in favour prevailed under the assumption that both lines would open up new areas of the country and in time would encourage settlement and future development and perhaps result in the lucrative sale of Crown lands. In the case of the Rio Clara extension, it was fully understood that the new line would run at a loss for many years following construction. This was documented and accepted by the government administration of the day. The railway was regarded as a means of quickly and efficiently moving road metal and asphalt extracted from the local asphalt lake to these remote districts to facilitate road construction and at the same time exploit local forests in the interior rich with timber. 
in Separia, the argument for railway extension became even more compelling once crude oil had been discovered in large quantities across the southern districts. The Separia extension opened in November of 1913 and the Rio Clara extension opened in September of the following year, one month after the outbreak of the Great War. The cost of building both lines and associated equipment amounted to around £400,000. The railway proved to be an indispensable asset during the Great War when almost everything was rationed or not available. The new railway station at Port of Spain, which had already begun construction in 1914, had to be put on hold and was not eventually completed until 1924. By 1915, the government railway totaled 123 and a half miles of line, and despite plans for further expansion of the network, this would remain the full extent of the government railways in Trinidad. After the Great War, the TGR was in a rundown condition and declining in the face of economic depression, with stiff competition from a rapidly expanding road infrastructure. Both the Separia and Rio Clara extensions were of great strategic importance to the government and people of Trinidad. New cultivation areas sprung up along the lines with associated increase in population. However, as had been forecast, both lines struggled financially and so did the TGR after 1920, at which point Trinidad had over 2,000 road vehicles. Earlier plans to extend both lines toward the coast were quickly abandoned. Ironically, the railway had previously profited from the transportation of material and equipment for road building, but now this system began to deprive the TGR of its very own revenue. Until 1920, receipts from the TGR exceeded the working expenditure by £788,551, but from 1921 to 1925, the cost of upkeep exceeded receipts by £216,245. In 1922, an economic committee was set up to review the financial position of the railway department. The recommendations were carried out with little or no success. In 1926, the annual railway report attributed losses to competition by motor and waterborne traffic, increased cost of administration, fuel stores and labour, increase in number of passenger trains and the reduction of passenger fares in the local train service in an endeavour to compete with motor buses, increased freight rates which had the effect of diverting traffic to other means of conveyance. The railway never recovered financially but nevertheless continued in operation despite three more economic reports over the years following 1922. World War II saw a brief revival of fortunes with increased traffic on the railways and corresponding improvements of receipts. In 1941, the Americans arrived and relied heavily on the railway to build and supply their new air base at Wallafield near Komutu on the Sangre Grande extension line. The spike in activity did not last very long and by 1950, the railway was in trouble once again. The first significant railway closures occurred on the 1st of April 1953 when the Arima to Sangre Grande, the San Fernando to Princestown and the San Fernando to Separia passenger services were all closed down. However, against all odds, the remaining lines of the TGR soldiered on into the 1960s and there were some further improvements in the railway in 1961. In 1963, however, the government finally decided that the railway had to go. A new public transport plan was agreed upon, which looked towards road buses than railways. In November of 1964, the new Public Transport Service Corporation, or PTSC, was created and in 1965 became a reality with both bus and railway departments. This was the end of the TGR as it had been known for so many years previously. From the formation of the PTSC, the days of the passenger railway service in Trinidad were numbered. All lines south of St. Joseph were shut down on the 30th of August 1965 when the last train to San Fernando ran, also shut down that same day was a passenger service along the Rio Clara line from Jerningham Junction through the Tabakeet Tunnel.
The Arima line proved more difficult to close, and this line carried on for three more years until 1967 when an adequate replacement bus service was in place. Final closures came in sectors, starting with the Tunapuna to Arima on Saturday 18th of February 1967, when the last train ran from Port of Spain to Arima, hauled by engine number 28. In August of 1967, the PTSC donated locomotive number 11 to the city of San Fernando as a museum piece on the fifth anniversary of Trinidad's independence. In December of 1968 came the closure of the St. Joseph Tunapuna section on Saturday 7th, followed closely by the San Juan to St. Joseph section on Friday 20th of the same month. The final curtain 